A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, May 30th. So glad you could join us. Some of the island's young people are using harder drugs such as ecstasy and methamethamphene. That's among the worrying findings in the 2020 Barbados Drug Information Network report, which called for quick action to be taken to prevent widespread use among young Barbadians. Research and Information Officer at the National Council of Substance Abuse, Laura Foster, presented the findings at a news conference this afternoon. Each person who uses drugs will have a primary drug of choice. And this slide here shows us the primary drugs for which treatment was sought at the various treatment centers in 2020. And what it shows us is that traditional drugs such as alcohol and marijuana and cocaine were the main motivators for treatment. But it also shows us some of the new and emerging drugs on the local drug scene. So here we can see things like ecstasy at the, at the psychiatric hospital and the NCSA and the prison. And we can also see ketamine at the, at the Substance Abuse Foundation and lean at the, at the prison within the Inmate Drug Rehabilitation and Counseling Program. And for those of you who are not familiar, lean is a mixture of codeine cough syrup with Sprite and usually a hard candy. The report also raised concern that young people were also consuming substantial amounts of marijuana. Home Affairs Minister Wilfred Abrams expressed concern about the trend. Despite the emergence of non-traditional substances, marijuana continues to capture the attention of treatment and law enforcement officials. It is predominantly popular and problematic among young people. Chronic use can lead to a range of psychological and social problems, particularly when use starts at an early age. Given the recent legislative changes surrounding marijuana and the global change in perspective and even the local change in perspective in relation to marijuana, it is imperative that we balance the resulting liberalization with public education in an effort to protect our young people. Education efforts should include information on the legislative changes themselves as well as the harms associated with marijuana use and the difference between medical and recreational marijuana. Educator Alwyn Bob is set to attend a disciplinary hearing tomorrow at the Ministry of the Civil Service. On April 5, Bab and his colleague Pedro Shepard, a former president of the Barbados Union of Teachers, were sent on half pay leave for six months for contesting the January 19 general elections as Democratic Labour Party candidates. Bab's representative, trade unionist Caswell Franklin, says he's pleasantly surprised by the early hearing. An additional 1,000 homes will be on the market come August September from the partnership between the National Housing Corporation and Guyanese manufacturer Dewar Villa. Word of this from Minister of Housing and Lands Dwight Sutherland. He revealed that key players met today at the National Housing Corporation to fast track plans for the project, which will provide modern houses valued at $100,000 for mainly low income earners. Sutherland was speaking to reporters at AgroFest, where a show house was on display in Queen's Park. We'll come up with a plan as to where we're, where we're, we're going, going to place the first thousand Joe Villa homes, Joe Villa NHC homes in this country. So these homes will be going in urban Barbados, in rural Barbados, across the length and breadth of Barbados. And we are targeting a thousand homes within the next 12 months. Yeah, that's my question. That's what you wanted to know. We just want to know how soon. Yeah, so yeah. next 12 months. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. I, I am saying that we will have within within a year time we'll have a thousand of these homes but less left less factoring shipping time for the houses um we are looking at shipping roughly uh, roughly about 30 like, a month and we can ramp up i can let mr can tell you about his production line but we are looking by august we should have these homes going up across barbados the Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs, Kurt Humphrey, today urged Barbadians and businesses to stop discriminatory practices against persons with disabilities. Speaking on Monday during a picnic held by the Multiple Sclerosis Society of Barbados at Pebbles Beach in recognition of World MS Day, Humphrey said although the government has taken several steps to improve the lives of persons with disabilities, there's still a high level of discrimination. We still live in a society where people discriminate against persons with disabilities. If you walk around here and you talk to some of the persons who are here, you would hear stories of people who, will, who would have lost their jobs 
because they eventually um, started displaying some sign of a disability, people who are discriminated against because they have a disability, how difficult it is to be able to access certain roads, certain places, to access the labor market. There's a lot of work to be done. I made a commitment that I will make myself available to the community to do as much as I can to be of use to this very important part of our, our country and our community. And I've even began the process of reviewing some of the subventions that we make uh, to, the, to these various organizations. I just feel that we have to do more. I've taken the point about transportation. I should tell you that the ministry has just acquired two vehicles that would be able to help move persons with disabilities, two, two brand new vehicles that are equipped. And now for the latest COVID-19 update, there were 170 new cases of the virus, 48 males and 69 females recorded on Sunday from the 479 tests carried out by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 20 persons were under the age of 18 and 97 were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 53, while 1,978 were in home isolation. Three deaths were recorded yesterday. These comprise two vaccinated men aged 80 and 92 and an unvaccinated 88-year-old woman. The death toll now stands at 449. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure oxygen natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy immunity and performance the next generation of hydration cure oxygen nature's ultimate water Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, the Jamaica Agricultural Society is raising concern that some retailers are engaging in price gouging of agricultural inputs. We get the details from Sandy Williams of Television Jamaica. In recent months, the prices of agricultural inputs such as fertilizers and insecticides have been steadily rising. The driving factors, supply chain issues and the war in Ukraine. President of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, Lenworth Fulton, believes some local stores have been increasing their prices too much. It's why he wants a survey of farm input prices to be conducted. Well, I think they should do a survey. We should give information and to expose those who are overdoing it. I think a survey now is necessary. With all what is happening, we have not seen a survey. I don't know who would be responsible for doing the survey, but it would give information and it would make us more sure-footed in our planning. We need information right now. The government has been providing subsidies to farmers to cushion the effects of the rising prices. But Mr. Fullerton says so far, the subsidies have not tempered the increase. On the international front, the federal government on Monday announced it has stable legislation that seeks to freeze the buying, selling, importing and trading of handguns nationwide. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. As a further part of this new legislation, we're also fighting gun smuggling and trafficking by increasing maximum criminal penalties and providing more tools for law enforcement to investigate firearm crimes. And we'll require the permanent alteration of long gun magazines so they can never hold more than five rounds. These are actions that doctors, experts and chiefs of police have been calling for for years and we're acting on their advice. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3. 
FM。